Good afternoon, everyone. BC Richfield here coming to you live from London. It's just gone past midday and a very, very nice sunny day here in London for a change, which I have to admit does have me smiling. Craig, welcome, buddy. We did miss you last week, mate, but good to hear you were away touching grass, as we say, or even better, touching the water, surfing. Fantastic. Whereabouts were you surfing, bud? It's uh, been a long time since I surfed, but I do love, love, love to scuba dive, and I do love the water as well, so definitely uh, some kindred spirits going on there, I think. So, we'll give a few minutes. I know UTC is still kind of, I know it's only a plus one difference, few people still finding time to adjust, myself included in that as well. Moral, hey buddy, welcome to the stream. Papa Legba, there he is, my man. Absolutely love that name. Those that know, know. Brilliant name. Great to see you all pouring in, guys. Look, I'm going to get going, but I'm just going to kind of start off slowly. I know there's a few people kind of still adjusting to the time difference. And also, guys, if this really is um, not working for you guys, being a little bit earlier, I can always push it later. So do let me know. Sanjay, good morning, my friend from Dubai. Wonderful part of the world where... Burb is also a, a, a resident and a frequent visitor, hoping to get out there towards the end of this year, mate. Got some exciting prospects coming up. I'll keep you guys all posted. But for now, it's just awesome to see you all on the stream. Brighton, Craigie boy. Okay, very nice. Oh, when the storms came through, man, that must have been epic. I remember I was in Bali. Um, similar situation. We had this unbelievable tropical storm come in. Nothing dangerous, thankfully. Um, but enough to just make it epic being out there on the water. Kelly, you absolute legend. What an absolute beauty. All the way from New Zealand. Sea Rocks here as well. Gustavo, hey, from Straya, my man. Stream Doctor, a wicked name as well. Afternoon all. And Sanjay, you met Burb over there, did you? Fantastic. What a lovely, lovely guy. And, uh, yeah, crazy, crazy knowledgeable. Always learning from that guy. So look, we've got a real good crowd in here at the moment. If people drop in, as always, just mention some bits and pieces in the comments. Going to look today a little bit more um, at, at Bitcoin and then a few alts and bits and pieces as well. Probably take a little touch on ES2. Because uh, obviously, as we can see, if we just dive straight into this chart at the moment, let me tell you what I've got on here first of all. So I've got my Pro high time frame trailer. Now this thing's really, really excellent at just helping you kind of stay within the trend. Nippa, Zippo, good morning, good morning. So all I've done here, let me just flick this off for a second so we've just got a nice clean chart. Now all I've got is I've got the liquidity resting here on a weekly scale. This is our swing higher. All right, this is up at about 32,450. Now something I always find really interesting with trading, it's the same with traditional markets as well, is how certain round numbers are, are well respected, right? Because it's, um, when you think about it, you know, if you're putting in take profit targets, stop losses, other bits and pieces, there's these kind of psychological levels. And with Bitcoin, 30K is is really a big one. So, I mean, if we just take this out for a second and let's just pop this on, on 30. Yeah, just so we've got that there as a marker, right? That's a really key psychological level. And we can see at the moment what we're doing is we're kind of hanging around it. All right. Now, we can see historically as well, if we look back, acted as key support here, support turned resistance here. I mean, look how clean that is, right? We see these long downside wicks as price is getting absorbed. But then all of a sudden, we get this shooting star type, you know, bearish pin bar. I know the body's bullish, right? But what we're looking at here is how much price is being driven down on this wick with a very small body, which is often signifies that the market's looking to go in that direction the same way as it does when we reverse and we're looking for these longer tail wicks down towards the bottom, right? To look for absorption. Here's a good example uh, with this candle here as well, right? So we see how this one here that kind of puts in with this bullish continuation is the reverse of this one here. Now, my very, very dear friend and fellow Bourbon Nest member, Pedro, Pedma7, um, who's an unbelievable algorithmic system builder and trader, very, very knowledgeable guy, one of the smartest people I know, just did a recent study, which was absolutely awesome, on um, candle candles like this. So pin bar candles, shooting stars, bearish engulfing, bullish engulfing. Um, and one of the real takeaways from the study was looking at the fact that we had um, 
you know, if you were trying to counter trend trade these, so let's say, for example, let's flip this on its head for a minute and say, let's look at these two. Yeah, similar candles, see, hammer candle, hammer candle. But notice how it didn't come to fruition. We didn't get that reversal. Well, that's because these type candles work a lot, lot better, more consistently when you're trading with the trend, right? So no question that the trend is down here, right? So when we're looking for our downtrend, yeah, and then we're looking for our candles, like our pin bars here, our bearish pin bars, then we can see that they're a little bit more effective or definitely even more so than that more effective when we're trading it with the trend. We can see the same here, right? We have this uptrend. We get our pin bar candle here and price really, really takes off. So on a weekly scale, we're just looking at these levels at the moment. That's all I'm really interested in. I'm going to leave the 30K on there just as a kind of reminder that for me, this is a really key kind of battleground for the bears and the bulls in terms of if we're coming up to target this liquidity resting up here or if we're looking for a deeper correction. McRule, how are you doing, buddy? Always good to see you. And Tony, my main man and good friend from our wonderful ex-colony, if you like, Australia, although I think we all know who's had the last laugh on that front, and it's certainly not us. Welcome, buddy. Great to see you on here. And YouTube user as well. What a crew. What a crew we've got today on a Monday. How are we doing, guys? Is everybody good? Feeling positive? We've got a good week ahead. We've had some nice bullish action on Bitcoin. We've got some lovely longs on alts as well. Um, yeah, it's nice. And a nice weekend. The sun shining makes such a big difference over here in London because we've really had a gloomy, gloomy winter. Um, but not here to talk about the, the weather, McGraw, you legend. Um, just just here to look at some charts, right? So before we get down into the nitty gritty, I just wanted to tell you what my high time frame thinking is just to share with you guys. And that's that I still really like this level. I mean, look how significant this level is. Yeah, look, caps the market here, resistance, 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 we get this deviation, big sell off where to rest liquidity below these lows yeah so this is your price leg at this point when that's been completed what then happens if we look at this as our price leg let me just mark this in down here right price comes up fails to get above here we get our deviation price sells off then it's looking for liquidity lower down right now look when price is stopping here look at all this liquidity just resting under these wicks and these lows yeah And then what we see here is we see price come in, corrects down lower, flirts with the liquidity resting under here before it has this deep purge down below this level, right? And then this turns out to be our deviation. So this traps a lot of people going the opposite way, right? So moves like this are very dangerous to play on the breakout because obviously as we go down, it triggers a lot of orders. It also takes out a lot of stop losses under here, right? Now, when it takes out these stop losses for people that are long, they become sell orders. What you do is you end up creating a load of sell liquidity down here and big players come along and go, thank you very much, buy that up. The market reverses and leaves people trapped down here. The other thing that, um, you know, that, uh, that's, that can be important but isn't something that I overly teach, <clears throat> again, this is an ICT concept that I learned many years ago and I believe he's done it in his 2022 model as well, which is this, right? So... You see, we have our bearish fair value gap here, or what ICT would call a SIBI. Now, while that's bearish, we're looking for price to correct back into this, yeah, and then get our short setups. However, if we reclaim this and look how it did it, see how it just sliced through it like it was literally nothing, yeah? Then that is flipping that area, right? And then you've got the case that this area now we're looking to act as support. And we can see when price kind of dipped into this, this is where we got our lovely pin bar candle, and then we had this big expensive move higher. But I'm not focusing on that really today because that is historical price action. I'm not expecting price to get down here right away or necessarily anytime soon. But as it does approach that level, then obviously we'll be aware of it. C-Ron, my man, how you doing, buddy? Had the absolute pleasure of meeting this guy in London. He came up for the blockchain event, one of the competition winners for us, and just what a really, really nice guy. And uh, Mick as well. We had a really, really good laugh up there with everyone. We had people from the Bird Nest crew. We had like Trader Dank was out with us as well. We, who else did we have? CRG, that legend, didn't we? Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, so look, these are the levels I'm looking. Now, when I'm looking for levels, I want to look for two things, really. I either want to look at it based on its reaction, meaning that I want to see a strong reaction, price to reject a level, which is typically what I look for on 
lower time frames, right? So what I mean by that as well is if we look at this, you see how when price comes into this level, there's quite a sharp reaction away from it, yeah? It creates like a V, yeah? And this isn't the best example. I'll show you better ones on lower time frames, right? But when you see price kind of come into a level like this, has this initial reaction, it's really struggling to kind of break down. Look at these big, expensive bearish candles that we had, especially this one after this move. Big bearish engulfing, right? Also an outside day because it completely takes over this previous candle. We've had this short correction. This is a great sign that price is looking to purge lower. And ultimately, we do reach down to get that liquidity. Kaya, hey, buddy, welcome. Uh, so that's what we're looking for here. That level is still very significant for me, as is this. Why? Because when we came down, we set this wick here. Look at the reaction that we had. Then when price refound this level, this was our key flip point yeah this was resistance then it sorry this was support it then became resistance we pulled up a little bit before having a significant sell-off right so then when we came back to this level the reason this was really important to me this 26536 level right be slightly different if you're trading on different accounts i'm with buy a bit um so if you're on binance bits and pieces it might be slightly different but look for this point on the charts where we had this strong reaction up we flipped this level when price came back to here i was expecting some kind of reaction some kind of bearishness right be able for price to break down here but it didn't look how it just pummeled through it yeah for me when i see a level not respected like that and you have a candle like this look at the volume in this candle in the body right then it's very very hard to fade candles like that falcon good afternoon buddy and gustavo what a legend. Absolutely sending a rose right back to you, bud. Um, so when we got above this level, we were simply looking for this to hold. So when we have price drive back down into here, that's why we we're looking at this fair value gap in here. I did expect a little bit of a deeper, deeper pull into this, which we didn't get, but we got some lovely long setups anyway. Now, the other level that I've got on here is this. Why? Because this capped the market for me as well, right? For a, a not too insignificant period of time. We can see here, Price couldn't close above it. One, two, three, four weeks. And then we got this pop. But also, SZ, the legend that he is, um, I learned so much off that guy over the years, by the way. If you're not tuned into his stuff, then do make sure to go and check out um, Trader SZ and obviously Bitcoin for Ledgers, which is his stream. Really knowledgeable guy. And the same for Trader Dank as well, um, who's very much cut from the same cloth, but has his own really unique style. But Trader SE said something that resonated with me years ago, which is small body candles. Yeah, these ones lead to big body candles. Small body candles lead to big body candles, right? It's the sign that price is compressing, right? That it's when price is compressing, it's getting ready to make an explosive move. Now, we don't know which way price is going to make that move, right? And we can use different techniques. Like here, we can use like an inside bar pattern, for example. This being our mother bar, range high, range low. Price drops down underneath, takes this, and then flies up. Falcon, my man, it's really good to have you back on the stream today, buddy. Been busy. That's good. It is the time to be busy. It's the time to build if you're one of these amazing creative people, which sadly I'm not. I'm not a builder. Um, maybe something I'll try and teach myself code-wise as I approach my 40s. But it's, um, in fact, there's another real legend in the space, Wifey, who, again, I don't know personally, just through SZ, kind of put the put her stuff on there or his stuff on there but it's wifey alpha unbelievable system builder learning a lot about that and he's another person that's learning code later in life so not to rub him down in any way not sure he's as old as me but it's uh, it shows you anything's possible but you know i'm a trader first and foremost but for people that are builders you know there's a real saying bear markets are for building um but they're also for learning right a lot of people that we've been working with at the burb nest we've been spending a lot of time doubling down on education and it's really, really paying dividends now. You know, some people in the chat this morning catching some amazing trades. It's one of the best feelings that you can have. So with that in mind, and before I digress too much, these are the levels on, on here, right? We don't really need to go too much more onto that on a weekly scale. So let's drop ourselves down onto the daily. Um, we saw previously with the BPRO trailer on the weekly that we had a strong bullish trend still. So again, I love the B Pro for this, just really helps us stay in with the trend, right? So when you get these little compression moments and people really start to wobble and they say, oh, we can't get above this level, we're going to sell off, you can revert to the trailer. We can see here when we get this black line above it, it's showing us that it's bearish and this silver line, which took us bullish right back down here. So this took us bullish from here all the way up to where it is at the moment, 41%. 
move, right? And, you know, this, um, and for anyone that hasn't checked it out, make sure you go and check out Burb's post. He did a brilliant video lately on how he used this system to, I think, I can't remember if it's quarter of a million or $300,000 it's up to now, his position. And he's trading predominantly this high time frame trailer, right? Obviously, with a lot of other knowledge that goes underneath it. But um, it's something that I've wanted to bring to the shows. I know not everybody has access to this, so it's always a nice thing to share. And also things like this are a nice thing to aspire to if it interests you. You know, if you're not in a position to get into indicators like this at the moment, then don't worry about it. Just, you know, follow, work on the areas that you are. You don't need these things, but it's something that you can always get at a later date. But I find it's really good for helping to stay in trend. Yeah, the same way with this one. Look, even when we had this bearish correction here, right, this is where we came into the corrective move from the open of this here to the close of this candle here, gives a six point four percent range here to trade to the downside and what you're looking to do in positions like that is you're looking or what i'm looking to do sorry is i want to see liquidity taken on this side first and we can see we've run these highs then when we correct i'm looking for clear and clean liquidity to be taken from the lows which for me are these lows so when we get into this corrective move here and we've got a clean target down here of this liquidity then why not trade this leg down if we're saying that price is looking for liquidity, right, which it does, you know, it's taking out lows to highs, highs to lows, filling those larger players' orders, then, you know, there's nothing to stop us counter trading the overall trend, which is something I mentioned in the Bitcoin report last night, right? Um, but when I do it, I do it with a smaller position size, yeah, because I want to, if I'm counter trading the trend, the trend is your friend, right? But obviously, time frames are very important and very relative. So where does that leave us on a daily scale? So we're here. I've got the trailer here giving me confluence with this fair value gap. Yeah, so this is our daily imbalance here. Price has shot up, leaving this gap. We're looking for price to come back down into this area, hold this area, yeah, and then for the bulls among us, we want to see this price push up from here, okay? Now, the key thing for me is we've got this resting liquidity overhead. So what would that look like? We'd obviously be dropping down to a lower time frame to get this, but we'd be looking for price to pull into our area of interest here, yeah, before making a move higher. Now, on a lower time frame, right, that will look something like this. You know, price will kind of meander down a little bit, get into this area. We will then look to see a sweep. Right, then what we're looking for here is this break of structure. So let me just move this, make this a bit thinner. Right, so how does this make any sense? How is this just not nonsense squiggly lines, right? Because on a daily scale, if this is our higher time frame, right, what we're doing is we're looking for this to purge down into our high time frame point of interest, which in this case is our fair value gap, right? So that's our thick green line. So let's get rid of that now and say, okay, well, what does that look like on a lower time frame? Well, on a lower time frame, what we will look for, let me just adjust this a little bit, right, is we're going to look to see if we can get liquidity taken out here. We get that sweep. Then we're looking for a break of structure, yeah, or a shift in structure, which we can see we get here. Again, remembering, guys, this is on the lower time frame. We're going to look for this. And then this displacement leg here, we want to see an energetic punch through. We want to see price telling us that it's ready to move, that big players are stepping in. And we see that as we do here with these inefficiencies. So what we want to see in this price leg here, and let me just make that thicker now so that you guys can see that a bit clearer. We're looking for price to purge lower, then for it to take out liquidity, liquidity resting below the lows that are set here. Then we want to see price recover here. So we've had this sweep. Now we want to see this high taken out. Yeah. So this is the high that broke the low. We want to see that broken with displacement. We want to see price punch through. We want to see an energetic, violent move through this. Yeah. And then we want to see price return to a fair value gap in this area. This is what I'm looking for, certainly. Um, and this for me has to be within the lower part of this range, yeah? From the high to the low of this. That's our premium discount range, yeah? So this, meaning that we're favoring longs from our premium, yeah? From discount, sorry, we're favoring shorts from premium. So again, if this is something you want to dive into, I do cover it on my streams. I'm not an ICT purist, but I do use a lot of his methods I learned. 
a lot from from Michael many years ago and still do today as I do from SZ, Burb and other legends in the space, right? But if it's something you're interested in learning, I'm happy to say how I use it, but I would always recommend going to the source and looking at ICT's concept for that, okay? So now when we drop down to the lower time frame, I'm just going to tidy this up. we can see exactly what we're looking for. So this is how we pick our area of interest, yeah? And then when we've got that area of interest, that's then what allows us to make our execution decisions, yeah? So it's very similar when we were down here, for example, right? Prices come down, swept the liquidity here, had this displacement higher, what did we do? Shifted structure, or well, not shifted structure, but we had our break here, had our sweep, the move up that led to this high being taken out led this thin inefficiency in here, this fair value gap. So now when we drop down to lower time frames, and actually, let me show you this on the hourly. These purple lines, by the way, are our dividers, our daily dividers. So session breaks, you can put these on on TradingView, guys, because they've moved it for some ridiculous reason. I love TradingView. I think the updates they do is great, but this one's mental because you used to just have it here on the little sundial, which was really handy to flick on and off now. I know it's not too much more, but you have to go into your settings, appearance, and then your session breaks are in there, all right? So what we're looking for here, yeah? Remember we drew this in, this was the inefficiency that we were looking for here. This was the break of structure here, yeah? This was the displacement we were looking for when price pushed up, so what do we do? We target these areas here, when it returns so it comes to here we get our sweep we're looking in here on the lower time frames for trades higher all right same way then when we come back to this area here and we take out these lows it gives us our day trade opportunities to come and attack these highs here so let me just pop these off for a second okay so that's what we're looking for there guys let me just Zoom back in here. Oh, I've got a twitchy monitor today, guys. I don't know what is up with it. Maybe a little bit of a heavy weekend. So while I don't think it's affecting you guys there, at some points one of my monitor keeps <laughs> deciding to switch off. So high time frame, really simple today, guys, right? Looking for the pullback into the fair value gap, looking at the reaction we get there, and then hopefully seeing price move higher. This 30K line for me is really important. If we get back above this, we start holding that, and then we look to move higher. Also, we want to remember as well today, we've got our daily and weekly open. Yeah. So if you want to check that, the cleanest way to do it when you go on to the weekly is just to go onto your weekly candle. Little numbers up here tell you what the open closes, high and lows are. So you look on here and you say, okay, open here was 3295.9. So if I take my horizontal ray and snap it to that, double check that I've got that 3295.9. Perfect. You can then go on here and set this as your daily open. This is also the weekly open. So I'm going to set this here as the weekly open, knowing that it's the daily open for Monday as well. Now, the interesting thing here is if we reclaim this, we don't only reclaim the weekly open and the daily open for Monday, if we reclaim it today, obviously, once we get back above 30k, we really could be looking at this to push further. So maybe if we're looking back on our daily chart, we could see this pull back into here, a strong reaction. We reclaim both of these, get a nice little bullish structure on the lower time frames, and I think we're really, really in business. So now we're moving down to the four hour. What are we looking for? Well, first of all, we flipped the B Pro trailer. So this black line coming down here. MM, hey buddy. Happy Monday indeed to you too, my friend. Out in Thailand, I believe, isn't it? Unless I'm mistaken. Um, so this grey line here was our bullish trailer. So see when price drew into it, it gave us lovely opportunities to long. Even gave us this one here for our scalps, all right, over the weekend. Didn't take them. I don't really favour trading over the weekend. It tends to be lower volume. For me, I like to be able to link it in when the traditional markets are open as well, like equities. But what it allowed us to do here is see when price came up here and it took out all these highs took out that liquidity. Now, remember what I was saying about our fair value gaps, yeah? So this was our bullish fair value gap. And for the sake of that, we're going to make that green, right? I know they're usually uh, gray on my charts as this one is as well, but just to make it symbolic. Why? Because when we took this, we left this, when this candle closed, 
we were looking for price to drop down into here for long setups. Now, what becomes very telling with these fair value gaps when they're inverse, especially when you get one like this, see this bearish fair value gap created in this huge bearish engulfing candle and outside day, is that then this becomes a bearish fair value gap, yeah? So now we're looking for price to track back into that, which it does here, respecting the equilibrium, so you can take a range onto this, right? You can look for that so that you're not getting closes above this. Price comes in, starts stuttering, ultimately breaks down. The Bitcoin report yesterday, I said what we wanted to see here was this liquidity taken out. In fact, I might even have, here we go, from the report itself, right? This bearish fair value gap, price to drive in. This is what we wanted to see for our bullish scenario, was price reclaim this, yeah, take out all this resting liquidity. But as we said, the high probability set up here was to the downside. Let me just turn this off for a second. So we got this nice and clean. And the reason for this, the reason for this dotted line here with the dollar signs, right, is that's where our liquidity is resting. So we wanted to see price purge up into this, take out all of this liquidity, and then break down on the lower time frames, all right, which we did get. So if we now look at this, we'll start on the hourly. Look at this drive up, right? this drive up, which was to just designed, in my opinion, to take out all the liquidity resting above here. We got that beautiful drive up, price broke down. Ultimately yesterday, we were trading this, I was trading this. This was the setup, right? Drew this in last night, <clears throat> excuse me. When you get this kind of move, right? Look, this is the move higher. And remember, we're just talking about the same things here. If we trace this fair value gap, just, unlock that for a second. But if we trace that back, overlays this one here pretty much perfectly, right? So remember what we're saying, if we were bullish here, we want to see this move expand higher, yeah? And then for price to come down, respect this fair value gap, and then build structure. So price would have come into here, recovered this, got our bullish market structure, right? And then we could look to get involved moving higher. However, obviously if we lose this, and again, remember this is really, really telling yeah, look at this, look at the drop, right? When price came up here, took out the liquidity above, broke structure to the downside, so then what are we looking for? We're looking for this move, yeah, which is the displacement leg. If we take our premium discount range, we wanna be short from up here, yeah? This is green and red to reverse because I've drawn it the uh, opposite way. But however you kind of envisage it, you want to be long from the bottom 50%, favoring shorts from the top 50%. Do we have an area that we could look to short up here? We absolutely do, which is why this fair value gap was drawn in. So then when price reaches into this area here, you're looking for the sweep, which you get price to break down, return to this area, and you're looking for your short setups, okay? So all we're doing is we're taking this high time frame view and then we're moving it down lower and lower through the time frames. So that's all historical. So that's been and gone. We had the power of hindsight to chat that through. So that was nice and easy. Doing it live is a different challenge, right? So what I was discussing here, you can see by the, I don't know if you guys can see them clearly, but the little orange dots down here, that depicts our London session. This is our New York session here, the blue dots. I really, really, really enjoy trading the New York session, all right? You get a lot of volume coming into the market then. So what am I looking for today? We're under the 30K level. For me, that's significant. We've got a draw on liquidity in the form of these lows, which is still drawing price down. And we've ultimately got these high time frame inefficiencies down here. MM, yes, mate, land of smiles. It absolutely is. I don't know if anybody, or I'm sure lots of people on this stream that are listening to this have been to Asia or live in Asia. Um, I've had the absolute pleasure of, uh, I've been very fortunate to travel in my life, but I have had the pleasure of going to the Philippines, going to Bali. A very, very dear friend of mine lives out in Thailand as well. Um, I just, you know, such beautiful, beautiful people, friendly, kind, you know. Again, not everyone, you're not going to get that everywhere in the world, right? But of everywhere I've been, just some magnificent people and they just have the most wonderful energetic optimism about them i think you could if i could just bottle that i would take one every day um so holding the fair value gap 
think we're bearish. I do believe we're going to purge lower. I like the look of these lows down here, right? And the draw of this inefficiency down here lower. So this is what we're going to be looking for here. When price reacts with this level, for me, we're going to get one of two things happen here. I think we see this kind of thing followed by a very quick recovery. Yeah, in which case we're then looking at the lower time frames, right? We want to see something like this. Okay, now I know that looks all squiggly and weird, but let me just kind of talk you through it. Key thing is going to be running this liquidity here from these lows, right? So once we've done that, we want to see a clean low set. We want to see a strong recovery here, right, to come back above here. But then what we want to see is a sweep of liquidity, which we would get here. This would be our shift in market structure, yeah? And then this is our displacement leg here. If we get that displacement leg up, we get that, you know, that impulse move higher, what are we looking for? We're taking our premium discount range, yeah? And we just want to see this draw down here, all right, into discount, giving us our long setups higher. Now, what if we don't get that, right? As neat and lovely as that all looks, what are we looking for if we're going to purge lower, right? So I must admit, I did want to see a little bit of a deeper pullback into this. Maybe we still get it. I think if we did get something like this heading into New York, yeah, and then price did, you know, gave us that classic kind of breakdown pattern here. Again, sweep of the high, take out the low. I'd definitely be looking to trade this lower down, all right? But again, I'd be looking to do this on the minute charts, right? You know, three to five minutes for the for the entries because you always want to make sure that you've got enough range. You want a clear target to be able to compensate for fees because the lower the time frame and the lower percentage moves you're trying to capitalize on, then the higher the fee allocation, all right, towards those. Um, so please do be aware of that because I know a lot of people when you see these aren't even considering that with their risk to reward. And actually it's a huge factor to work out what your real risk is, okay? Um, so does anybody have any questions on that? And also does anybody have any charts that they'd like me to take a look at? We managed to get through Bitcoin quite quickly today. Um, as you guys know, I do like to see how Monday's range, you know, starts to play out. But in terms of the bearish scenario, we start getting below and holding below here. I think we're purging lower. Ultimately, I want to see this green line hold at 28,417. I'm not saying we do go that deep, but I do think we pull back deeper to fill some of these inefficiencies here. I think if we recover before this and we start taking out this fair value gap here on the hourly, I think that we've got her. I think that this is going to show a lot of strength, okay, moving forward. Sanjay, thank you. Well, thank you, mate. Very kind. Took the same trade, watch the fair value, enjoy the fair value get playing out. I can't thank you enough for the education part. You are more than welcome, mate. Like I say, it is, um, look, we see price really starting to move now, right? Just as we were talking about, look at that purge, yeah? Look how it's really, really digging in deep. If we don't see a strong recovery here, then we could quite easily make another inefficiency in here that we could look to get short setups heading in towards a New York session in a couple of hours. Um, but absolutely, all on you, mate. I mean, I know people say I really, really appreciate sharing the knowledge. It, it helped me a lot when I was starting out as well and still does today. I still learn from some real legends in the space. Um, but uh, it's you, mate. You've got to execute. You've got to put it in motion. That's one of the hardest parts in truth is having that piece about yourself and the understanding and the system that you're trading um, you know, I'm God, really, really rocky kind of year for me. I had some really big highs, really big lows, had a really kind of net neutral March in truth, had a decent February, had a really big January, April's going well. Um, but you need to have that, um, uh, you need to have that belief in your system, right? Cause you will go through losing streaks. And the key thing there is not to run away from your system. Um, it's just to kind of really focus on it, make sure you've got the testing and just stick to it and believe it. Cause the minute you start to stop taking your setups, the market has a really, really funny way of making those set up some of your best ones. And then you second guess yourself and boom, you know, you miss. Yeah, it is a good purge there, Craig. You're right, mate. I did I did feel like it was kind of alluring the liquidity being left under here, right? I think good purge here. We recover this level. It's not over yet by any means. We're looking for this fair value gap to defend if we're looking for bullish continu bearish continuation. Um, and also for something to be created in here, I think. If we start creating a nice fair value gap in here, guys, yeah, let's say we create something like this and we're starting to go into the New York session over here, which is about uh, 1.30 UTC, 2.30 London time, then we can look for price pulling back into this, yeah, knowing that we've got a lot of this to fill down here. And ultimately, this level 
which is looking to be tested. Uh, so let's see how that one plays out, shall we, guys? Uh, Paulinho, my man, what a fantastic footballer Paulinho was as well. No questions. I do want to say I love your method. Works for me. Huh? Best for me. <laughs> awesome, buddy. Yeah, market structure. Something that I think people um, people overlook sometimes rushing into positions. But but yeah, absolutely. As long as you've got your right triple screen method using your high time frame, medium time frame, and then your execution time frame, market structure is really, really important. Uh, Melissa. Wow. From Oz. Awesome. One of my very best friends moved to a beautiful part of the country over there called Mildura. Married a beautiful Australian lady, has a wonderful life, two beautiful children. Um, and oh, loads and loads of good Aussie mates. Um, yeah, hope things are going well for you guys over there. I know you guys have been having some serious weather recently, so I hope everybody over there is safe and doing good. Um, Paulinho, yeah, also checking BTC dominance. Yeah, on this dump is also dumping nice, which means you could be opening up some windows of opportunity for alts, okay, as BTC starts to lose its dominance on the market. If there's an overall bullish theme for continuation and there's favoritism towards that, then the alts can be the things that really start to pop here. Yeah, so we'll take a look at a couple of those as well. And in fact, I think we've had some requests here as well. Guys, if I haven't got your requests from earlier, I do apologize. Just looking back through here, SBTC loser soul. Yeah, sure. YouTube user, you want a bit of soul as well. Joe as well. Remind me on that one. Um, see, Ron, we'll take a look at Joe as well. So let's just pop onto the soul chart, shall we? See how we're rolling with our old friend soul. Pump the last 20 minutes of this stream out and let's see what we've got. What have we been looking at here? Yeah, so look, this level, funny enough, I think we covered this on the stream last week or a couple of weeks ago um, in terms of talking about this humongous mother bar that we've got containing price. Um, but YouTube user, be project print an 81% bullish div on the 15-minute chart. Nice. I mean, well, I would say, and not to comment on your system here because you could be using it really, really well, especially when looking at these kind of reversal points, I like to kind of take into consideration the four-hour um, I find really, really useful with BPRO divergences, like really, really powerful. Um, and then when you can kind of put that in context when you're looking for your order blocks, your fair value gaps and stuff like that, 15 minute, you know, for the very low time frame systems, I think is very good. Often our divergences, <clears throat> excuse me, often our divergences are catching these corrective moves in ongoing trends. Yeah. Um, but really, really good spot. And again, love BPRO for its divergences. Uh, it collates a load of different indicators, I think 10 or 11, and works out the divergences across all of them. So you get these really, really strong signals and it weights it in a percentage. Um, so before I diverge <laughs> too much again, this is what we had on last time. So look how beautifully this played out. Actually, this mother bar high and low, this is our mid range. Yeah. So let me just hide these. So we've got something a bit cleaner. Once again, all we've been doing with these alts is just liquidity hunting, right? So look, our liquidity here swept, we recovered, we pushed higher. Now we're moving into this key level. What is this key level? Similar to like what we had on Bitcoin, remember, except we didn't get this clean retest, but something capped the market here, right? Something really, really affected. Price hit this level and then just took off. So remember what I was saying, for me, if I'm looking at a key level, same way as this one here and this one here, you see how aggressive the reactions are when they tag in, yeah? Now, we've got this midline from this upper range, but at the moment, we're, tra we're trading in the upper 50%, the upper half of this range made by this mother bar here. So looking at this, look how much strength we showed here holding this midline. Again, this beautiful pin bar candle, what did it do? Drove down, and this is why I do really like the principles of um, premium discount, yeah? So let me just draw our premium discount range in here. So see how price draws up, yeah? Now when price gets down here, takes out liquidity here, draws into a fair value gap that sat down here in discount, this is favoring our long setups. This is when we wanna start getting really, really interested, right? Because if we think about how systematic trading has become, you think of the bots, the algorithms, the systems that exist on there, the algo trading systems. It makes sense to me that they would break these price legs down, yeah? And that any trader would because you're getting your better risk to reward if you're looking for the pullback to these areas in the same way that you would do if we were using like a traditional Fibonacci. We didn't quite get the pull down here into the golden pocket, yeah, but we did get 
between that 0.5 and the 618, okay, which is showing us a real bit of strength here. So where does that leave us? Well, we haven't quite set this fair value gap here on the weekly, but we have had this, this big expanse higher. We do once again, however, find ourselves battling this level at 25,765. So what does this look like on our daily? Yeah, absolutely, guys. We'll definitely take a quick look at, at gold for you as well um, and nip par. Remind me at the end if I forget, buddy. So we can see prices coming up. It's holding this area. Once again, if we're looking at this on a daily scale, we see we came up, we took this out. Perfect. We didn't get this reaction here, did we? But look at what it did. Look at how it just flipped it, right? This was a key point here. Again, price hit this level, aggressive move lower, right? Which was this swing high here as well, this inefficiency. But it's whatever the reaction was here, whatever caused that, you know, a higher time frame order block here perhaps, this was a strong reaction to the downside. So when we got back here again, it's a point of interest, right? Price comes in, gets an initial rejection. Now what happens? Price gets acceptance above it, retests it, holds it, and pushes it up. So all of a sudden, this level here, which is 23.918 on the Bybit charts, right, becomes a really, really key level. So also, guys, if you're a fan of the stream, if you want to trade with us, you want to get the trade setups and everything that you get at the Bird Nest, there is the banner along the bottom. I know I'm rubbish at mentioning these things. I always forget. But you can get the trading calls for free. I think you only have to sign up. I think it's a minimum deposit of like 100 bucks or something on Bybit. Amazing exchange, really intuitive, great UX. <clears throat> we are very, very selective over our partners. Um, thankfully, because of the company that Bird has built over the years and the, and the rest of the team, we can, you know, we can afford to be. We have a very, very strong moral grounding. And if you're interested in anything in terms of the decentralized exchanges, then Apex are really, really cool as well. So try them out for their UX. Um, but so we're here, right? So I'm looking at this as a range, yeah, between here and here, yeah. So we can see the price action here. We've set our low, set our high. This is the key level here that's supporting price. So what are we watching for? Well, if we get a deeper correction, then taking out these lows, recovering them would be super bullish, in my opinion. We've got a lot of liquidity resting below these lows, yeah? So this is where we would get our little like dollar sign out and we'd go like this. Okay, because look, that low was set, wasn't run by that one, wasn't run by that one, and wasn't run by that one. Price purges down here. What's it going to do? Let's think about this. It's going to start getting people bearish, right? And it's going to make people FOMO in. People will tell you that they should have shorted here. And, you know, if that's your system and you're looking for trades based on invalidation or if you're looking to take early stage positions, high risk, high reward, then fine. But if you're looking for confirmation, don't kid yourself, right? Wait for the setups to come to you. What would make me even more convinced by this? Yeah. Let me just hide whatever that is just for a second. If I can, is it going to let me? No, it wants to get rid of that as well, doesn't it? There we go. So what would make me even more convinced here? Because we don't have, we're not driving into an inefficiency here on a daily scale, right? But remember what we said, if we're looking at our leg, yeah? And we want to take that into our premium and discount a deeper correction here into this fair value gap, you know, for me it would be really, really interesting. We start to then recover that on the lower time frames, get a bit of bullish market structure on the go. And I think this thing, could really, really fly because we need to remember if BTC dominance starts to drop, it shows that, you know, there's opportunity here for alts. And look how money cycles through those. Um, what we want to see is BTC find some support, start to consolidate a bit, and then you can really see some alts starting to pop off. All right. But let's just take a look at the four hour as well. Let's see what we've got in here. Again, not really leaving any inefficiencies in this move up. If we're looking at our kind of traditional Fibonacci's here, we can see that we're approaching the golden pocket. I think a real hold and reaction here starting to move back up. I don't think I'd be looking to jump into long positions. I think we could be seeing a pullback before a move down, but it's always worth monitoring the golden pocket. All right, does often get a lot of involvement. Um, 
yeah, so I think it's quite clean here, really. We've got all this resting liquidity down here. We've got this key level to hold. If we come down, clear out some of this liquidity, reclaim this level, I think we can push up. Yeah, so something like this. Price comes down into here, takes out the liquidity we've got resting there, recovers this level, yeah, and then gets back in. <laughs> I love how terrible this pen is on higher time frames. But <laughs> you get the idea, right? Price comes down, we purge liquidity, we recover this key level, treat it as support again, reclaim bullish market structure and this is where we would be looking to take our entries to liquidity resting higher okay guys so i hope that's clean does anybody have any questions on soul if not we will fly ourselves into what did we have joe wasn't it c ron i think you wanted to take a look at mate let's pop back we can always pop back to soul guys if anybody's got any questions i don't think i've got joe on here actually Ah, oh, there we go. It's on the exchange as well. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can do a really super aggressive up down. Here we go. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> There's your data set, right? But you know what? Even with this, even with this little data set here, right? That for me clearly on a weekly scale is capping the market to the upside. So that becomes a level of interest. Where's our resting liquidity lower on a weekly scale, this low? Yeah. Ultimately, that's our prior week low. So we're going for that one, which I'm going to do in purple. No, I'm happy with that on that level. Daily scale. We can refine this down a little bit more. So what have we got here? This is our swing low. So if we want to include this as well, take that across to there, but make that a little bit smaller and our traditional kind of ready pinky color that we use. So we can see price capping here. We had this deviation. Now we're getting it. Price is kind of back in this level here, starting to sell off a little bit lower. Um, we could see some stops resting below here, which we would want to be aware of. We can see that our B Pro flipped bearish on us here on the four hour scale. What's it doing for us on the daily? Oh, I mean, the daily really gave us a good heads up here, actually, right? Because we were bearish from this candle. So we actually, BPRO really did catch the top on this one. Now, normally with your kind of higher time frame trends, you're looking for that to look and kind of go with, um, you know, continuation to keep you in the trends. But sometimes it really, really does clock them really nicely. Uh, let's just take a look on our hourly quickly. Yeah, so hourly look, we had this little bullish correction here, right? And this makes a lot of sense. We had this downtrend. Look, again, guys, this is what we're talking about when we're looking at liquidity, right? Look how price moves, takes out a high, comes down, sets this clean low. Look what happens when we get an interaction with that low there, yeah? So we've swept that low. Once again, what do we do? Sweep the low, break structure to the upside, yeah? We look for that impulse move. We look for a retrace here. And guys, if you're not comfortable with your fair value gaps and stuff like that, right, then... Just look at how price actually moves, okay? So let me just do that a bit thicker here so this is clear. So you see this move up. See how we've got nice, decent sized bullish candles here punching through and taking out market structure. So there's our shift. Yeah, for me, that's when we really start getting interested. And then what we can do, if you're not looking for your fair value gap players, you can just monitor this area here with your traditional Fibonacci's, your golden pocket, and then when you move down to a lower time frame, you're just employing the same techniques. And again, guys, look, this is why I really love the New York trading session. You see these plays set up time and time again during New York. What do we say we're always looking for? A sweep on our level. Yeah, so this is our point of interest, our Fibonacci, our golden pocket. What do we want to see? We want to see price reclaim that. Yeah. So look, there's the higher that sweeps the low. Price bursts through this, yeah, with bullish intent, which we can see here. We look for our fair value gap here, which happens to also line up exactly with the golden pocket. Price retraces into it. Now, this is where you need to kind of try and tweak and test your different systems because I don't think you would have got an entry here if you were looking to enter this in terms of premium and discount. Certainly not right away. You can see the retrace didn't quite get in there. And it even just kind of kept us out here as well, right? So again, didn't get the setup we were looking for there. But do you know what? 
when price moves, we need to have time as a factor, right? Or certainly we don't need to. That's such a nonsense thing to say. Sorry. It's not about imposing ourselves on anybody's trading system or the market. For me, time is an important factor. And this trading session here in New York, if I've got a clear structure like this, yeah, and price is breaking away from me, this price leg that we've got here, see this as it continues to go up? We get this correction within New York. For me, I can then target fair value gaps, these for example, right? Why? Because they're in discount. I'm not looking to cherry pick the ones at the bottom. I want to take the easy entry here. If we start purging lower, you can take them as well, right? But you can dip into this area here, get a nice setup within your fair value gap. But for me, if it runs after the New York trading session, then I'm not as interested because we're going into a slightly different cycle. A trap from Robert Colby. Yeah, very well could be, mate. You often see these deep corrections, these moves as runs on liquidity, right? So if we're just taking a look at where we are at the moment, before I digress too much. Turn the trailer off for a second. So we've got our levels, we've purged here. For me, what would make the most sense is we've got, let me just get rid of that. We've got our liquidity resting down here. Yeah, we've also got liquidity resting under this low. We've taken out the liquidity resting under this low. So on an hourly scale, we wanna be aware of that, right? So that's our latest sweep, yeah? Now, it could be the price has got enough uh, bullish intent here, bullish momentum that it reclaims after this sweep, you know, comes back in, gets into our bullish structure, right? And gives us opportunities to the upside when we reclaim that structure here. Or it could be the price is looking to purge lower, but we're having decent reactions here as price is driving down lower. There's definitely some buyers here, but I would definitely be looking at this and this, these kind of relative equal lows here. Price does very often like to run those lows. So if we start purging down into here, and like Robert's saying, it could really be a trap designed to get people short and generate liquidity. Craig, thanks buddy. Always appreciate you coming on. I will see you Wednesday, my friend. Have a fantastic week. Um, so for me, Joe, that's what I'm looking on here, purge down into these levels. I then want to see how price holds. If we show a bit of weakness coming down into here, we get this nice quick recovery. Yeah, then we're looking for something like this, right? For price to come down, sweep the low, come back out, break the high, and then we're looking for our fair value gap in here. Yeah, or certainly that's what I'm looking for to go long. If I don't get that set up, it tells me that price might not be ready to make that move yet, and we could just be in a corrective move for further downside. What happens if we break down further? Well, I'd be looking for price to come back down and start finding resistance here. Yeah, if we start finding resistance here, and then we get this type of breakdown, what have we done? We've done the reverse of what we were looking for here, yeah? We've taken liquidity from the highs, we're trapped under a key level, we've then broken structure, or we've got back into continuation of bearish structure here. In this leg down, we're looking for price to retrace into a fair value gap, and we're looking to take our short trades. I'd definitely be aware, you know, these kind of lows here, but ultimately, if you're a big player, I think you're gonna be targeting the real key higher time frame swings, okay? So that's where we are on Joe. Let's take a look at gold. Just clear up everything we've got on the gold chart. Anytime, Sebron, my man, any time at all. Uh, right, so gold, let's take a little peek here. Yeah, so gold performing nicely. Schiff will be delighted to see that. Ultimately, my target for gold remains the same, and it's been this for a while. This, because these are a very, very, very key set for me of equal highs, right? <clears throat> so when you see anything like this, look at this batch of equal lows. This could not have been better placed to make this case and point. 
look what happened. We extend these out. Price takes out this because it's showing us that there's liquidity built here, engineered or otherwise. Something's clearly stopping the market here. So if you wanted to go long and you had a lot, a lot of money and a big position size and you keep getting slippage when you open your position, yeah, then what you want to do is you want to convince everyone to go short and then you want to buy up all of their short orders and fill them with your longs and then you get these big explosive moves higher. So what we're looking for here, we could very much be looking for here. Yeah. Stream Doctor. Love the name, by the way. Thanks, PC. Love the way you run to me. Much appreciated. No, really appreciate you tuning in, guys. Appreciate all of you giving up your time to just listen to me ramble on about my thoughts. Um, hopefully it's helpful to you guys. And if it is, just pop the likes on for us. And uh, if you're interested in trading with us, you can come and do it at Bybit or Apex or come and grab yourself a free trial um, and come and be part of the community over at the Nest. See if it's something for you. So deviation strong move up. So where's our resting liquidity now is here, right? So what I'd be looking for here on gold, and people I think will start to get really horny when gold gets above this level, because it's been under here for quite a while, right? What I'm looking for is something like this. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get it. <clears throat> and also what's really worth remembering with things like this is that, you know, the current market conditions are quite tricky. The dollar's very weak at the moment because, you know, you've got a lot of negativity around the dollar, right? There's a lot of money printing going on, obviously the banking bailout, everything that's going over there. We've got to consider the fact that the oil countries are trying to abandon the petrodollar as well, which is putting a lot of weakness in. Um, so yeah, gold can be one of those things that it really can start to build a bit of momentum. But for me, if I'm looking to long this, yeah, so that's my short plan there. If I'm looking to long this, then I understand that I've got really between here and here. Yeah, what would I have wanted to see? I would have really ideally wanted to see a decent pullback in this area here. So when we stopped here, price had dropped just a little bit deeper, giving some buying opportunities. The reason for that is when you're buying on the way up like this, it can be quite tricky. Um, you know, so what we do is we tend to kind of defer to the lower time frames. I didn't really like gold massively here because we kind of came up, we tried to attack this high, showed a lot of weakness. We had this impulse move up here. And this was your good opportunity to buy if you were looking for sort of short term here, looking to trade this higher. Yeah, look what we had. Price took out these highs, had that nice impulse move right now. Look at the difference in that move to say this one here. Yeah, I'm not saying you wouldn't want to be involved in these moves, but you just you can't really see the energy stepping in. It's a real mixture of candles. Black and white. The white candles have kind of got decent sized bodies on them, but nothing major. We're in the higher time frame established uptrend, so we're looking for price to, to have some motion here. So when it moves here like this, you don't really want to be caught, you know, diving in here. Because if you dived in here and price started to reverse here, you're struggling to get out or you're feeling trapped now. If you're in here, this fair value gap, you get yourself in here, stops below this price swing, you've got an aggressive entry. You can start to take some profit when you start engaging with these highs up here. All right. So it's employing a day trading style strategy or certainly how I day trade, but to the slightly longer term charts. So with that all said, where does it leave us? We can see on the four hour scale, we've just flipped bullish. But again, you can see here in this compression range we've had when we're looking at what BPRO is doing, kind of keeping price down underneath this at the moment. We've just flipped bearish here on the four hour. So what are we looking for? Right. So this can be really key help to us looking at this both ways. So when we see this, we've got two things here. We've got a volume imbalance, which I zoom in a bit, you can see between these candles here, see how we've got that gap. We also have the fair value gap in here and we've got the inefficiency in here as well. So this area, basically all of this area here, if we look at that as a rejection zone, right? Now, where can this also be helpful? Well, like we say, we've still got a, we've still got our bullish bias on the higher time frames. Yeah, our lower time frames are starting to turn, but we've just seen a sweep here, right? And now, if we're saying to ourselves, okay, well, where's our, where's our leg? If this is the leg we're looking at here, we can see that we're down now, favouring long setups here. So, if we do get a reaction here, what can we do? Well, we know we've got liquidity resting here. And we know that this should suppress price. Yeah, we've taken liquidity from the lows. So if we're looking for bearish continuation, we're looking for price to come back in here. Yeah, take out these lows, right? And ultimately, we're then looking for setups in here to drive price lower. However, if price can reclaim this, 
Yeah, especially if it does so with impulse, yeah, it goes through with a bit of energy. Then what we do have is we've got a nice ability, a nice ability, a nice view on the higher time frame level to drop onto a lower time frame chart and seek some setups using this as bearish resistance flipped to bullish support. Okay, so that's what I'd be looking for on gold. Any sustained breakdown below this, yeah, and we're obviously targeting these lows as we move down. Ultimately, I think probably favoring this area here because if I just clean that up a bit, we can see <clears throat> this low, this low and this low, untapped by that, that untapped by that. Once again, we get to draw our nice little dollar signs there, yeah? So maybe a deeper correction into this level before a recovery, all right? So was there, let's take a quick look. I think we've covered that on gold. I hope that's been useful, guys. Um, yeah, awesome. Look, um, I know we're approaching an hour now. No point in kind of going on too much. Nip Pa, you're very welcome. That double top is my aim to short. Yeah, absolutely. Um, those tickets are for this chart and where you trade this is. Sorry, YouTube user. What's that, mate? Could you clarify what those tickers are for this chart and where you trade this as it looks interesting. So sorry, mate, what do you mean by the ticker? So it's like the, this one here as in like the USD pair and then with Pepperstone. So I used to, I'm not trading currently with Pepperstone, full disclosure, not because I don't like them or think that they're a good exchange. Um, it's just when they changed regulations, bits and pieces change in fees, the way that the transactions happen. Um, the real key thing is to make sure that it makes sense in um in your area that you live right because pepperstone are very good in the uk um but i know you can trade obviously through the funded accounts again make sure that you're doing a lot of um diving into that yes sorry youtube is c-ron well done mate i've completely missed that my really simple question xau yeah gold usd um so this is the pair and that's the exchange there which is pepperstone all right if you go on and you're looking to add these yeah, you can just go on XAU USD. You can get them on Oanda, Forex.com as well. I'm not really one to recommend traditional exchanges like this because it's so, so very, so, so dependent on the country that you're from. But I know Pepperstone have a very good reputation here in the UK, um, as do Oanda, and there are others as well. There, there is as well the opportunity, you know, through certain DEXs, certain other ways to trade through crypto. But I would always say make sure that you're doing a key amount of research into that as well, guys, all right? Because the fee structures are very different. How you buy these things are very different. It's like when we're trading, for example, on ES, um, you know, you're buying actual contracts on ES, right? Which is why we trade the mini futures. Um, but come in, dive into the community. A lot of people, Bast is who uh, trades with us, the exceptional um, Forex and traditional market trader does some beautiful trades on oil gold bits and pieces like that so always pop in and ask questions always happy to help um but yeah so just one closing thought here on es is this is still looking pretty bullish i've got these targets here a lot of liquidity resting up here i was looking for price to come up take out some of these targets before kind of moving a little bit lower down um the reason that all of this is obscured is because this is the march moving to April contracts, all right? Um, so when you look that up, make sure you're trading the relevant contracts. If you're there on futures, you can use the index charts, obviously, to get a really big, long time frame view of it as well. So yeah, um, on this, this seems really, really tempting for me. If we saw this sweat price to come back down, then I would expect price to kind of come and search for liquidity lower down. I'm not saying we get that size of a drop, but anything kind of relative on that as well. Um, Nit Park, good question. I actually don't trade very actively on Mondays. I know some people that really, really do, um, that are exceptional traders. I think we all have our little quirks, really. So for me, what I like to do is um, I like to trade Monday's range quite a lot. So I quite often wait for Monday to develop, yeah? And then what I would say with that is you can use this indicator... I think it's called month, week, breaks. This one here, month slash week breaks, right? Now, if you pop this on, 
and then you go on to styles here. I want to see my weekly breaks, right? And let's just make this a nice big, clean, clear color. So we can see that. Now, when I go down onto a lower time frame, okay, see the red vertical lines here represent the week, right? The start of a new week. And what I'm looking to do here is I like to trade prior days highs and lows, prior weeks highs and lows. I find that there's normally really good liquidity set um, above and below those. So I'm going to pop my session breaks back on here, right? Now, start of this week, start of this week, when you're looking at Monday's range, yeah? So that's bearing in mind, that's the high and low set by Monday. That can form a range that you can trade, yeah? So what I would suggest to people is go back, pop that month, week break on, yeah? And then you can do something like this. Where's our, uh, here we go, parallel channel. Right, so let's say this for an example. This is Monday, we can see that and it just alerts our attention to it because we've got our red line here and we've got our session breaks on showing this is the close of the session, that was the open of the session. So we take the high to the low, yeah? So we draw that across here. Now we take it down to the low of Monday. See that here? So it's just that high to that low. So that's Monday's range. Now, with that being set, what we can do is we can actively look to trade this. And what we're saying to ourselves is like with any range trade, let me just turn the session breaks off for a second just to clean the chart up a little bit. Remember like we do with any range, what we're looking for here is price to come up, interact with our range high. This was Monday's high, what happened? Deviation, price closes back in the range, comes below our key SR level, sells off, targeting the midline. That gives you your trades here. Now, when you're holding the midline here, showing strength, yeah, that's when we're once again, we would do this on the lower time frames, but we're reverting here, showing strength, showing strength, what are we looking for? Price to run liquidity, then we're targeting liquidity above, these moves here. Price comes in, deviation here, reclaims again in here. What are we looking for? We're looking for price to sweep, which we get here, and then we're targeting liquidity above these highs, all right? So that's often why I like to see Monday's range play out. Obviously, it doesn't work like that every week, um, but it is a really, really good thing to monitor that as well as prior day's highs and prior day's lows as well. All right, guys? So look, I hope you found the stream helpful. I know we run over by about seven, eight minutes today. Um, do always love having you guys on the stream. It's a fantastic way to start the week. Thank you very much for asking really good questions and all the support you show as well. Do come and grab me on Twitter. You can find me at BC underscore Richfield along with my Nest family as well. Come back, come and join us over at the Nest. You can take some free trials, come and see what we're all about. And if you're interested in trading with us, you can do so over at Bybit. Yeah, links down in the description, guys. Wishing you all a very, very good and prosperous week ahead. I am going to be back on Wednesday. We're going to do our alt request Wednesday. So if you've got any ideas for that, do come and grab me. All right. Apart from that, have a fantastic week. Thanks again to everyone. And I'll catch you on Wednesday.